just get him trained up, listen to everything I say to him. Get used to water, get used to countryside um, scenarios. Walking on different tracks, getting them used to climbing over walls or even over turnstiles. I right, so you can still hear that wind really blowing a holy. <laughs> These crackers. So, my word for going out now, he knows that. I say, come on, we'll go to the park. P E R K. So, he knows that word, he gets really excited. But I say, come on, we'll go to the park. He's, he has a um, prick up and he tilts his head to the side when he's listening to what I'm saying. Just like corn used to. So, like I say, teaching a dog, it's repetition, repetition, repetition. They get used to what you're saying, and if you associate it with what you're doing, because I, I said to him last night, I said, right, we're going out tomorrow, just like I used to say to corn, not now, tomorrow. And he used to know uh, when when I got up out of bed, we'll be going out. He knew exactly what was going on. Just repeat the words and they get you so look at him, get a drink, he's getting brave. <laughs> he was terrified of the water first, but now he's just waiting in there, which is good. I didn't have to drag him across. Good boy, son. Good boy. Of course, this is all good, pure, clean water for him to drink now, lot. Fluoride shit with my taps. That gives dogs heart attacks. And us. Way across this. Easy just in case I slip. It's like some parts is like green, mossy. So I just take the time. So if I do go to start slipping, I can correct myself. Oh, son, come on, good boy, good boy. Right, so let's just get it out there. I'm starting to do my videos again, and I'll repeat myself where I put on my old videos. That's gone now. Um, I do not and never will advertise any products on my channel, my private channel, where I get up to what I do, where I weigh uh, for these hikes is my business and my business only. And I'm not going to be a corporation bitch and be tempted with free gifts to advertise products for these companies which just use you and turn your channel into a shopping channel so I will not be advertising anything just showing you the beautiful countryside uh, and if I'm with a dog just show you how the dog enjoys himself he's out he walks with me but mainly, this is just the start of it, to get me used to come out the countryside. Then, eventually, when he's outgrew his puppiness, and he becomes an adult dog, I'll be putting on his leader, walking through fields of sheep, to show him sheep, and show him that there's, there's no danger, that, you know, and just to ignore them, like I did with corn over three years. So eventually, He's just, they're not new and he won't need to be curious and want to go to them because I don't want ticks jumping off them and gun on him because they're full of ticks. Um, we're going along the bridle path the other day, just around the corner from where I live, uh, past the pub, and two horses were coming up. So I kept him on his lead and I says, How are you? Come up, love. I said, I'm going to keep a hold of him because he's a big puppy and tends to want to lunge to say hello to everybody and dogs and puppy, you know. So I said, I want him to get used to the sight of horses. So I should have just trotted along. And as predicted, he wanted to lunge forward. And you can see the horse was a bit alarmed. 
So I just kept them tight on the leader. And like I say, the more the sea, he sees horses and they're not, not to bother him or he's not to bother them, it just grows out of them. There's no curiosity and there's no drive to run up to them. Good boy, sir. Good boy. Good boy. I know somebody who would be falling asleep in the back of the car going home. Wouldn't you? You'd be lying down on your blankets going home or something, wouldn't you? It's murder when I first set up because I've got my spare wheel in the back and I've got a coat inside of it. And what he does, he just stands on that and he's right up against the dog guard and it blocks out. I can't see through the back window. All I see is a dog right across the back. <laughs> so eventually, after about 15 minutes of driving, he eventually did light down. So I see out the back window again. So, but it, it, it teaches me to rely on my mirrors more so, like, so it's a good thing. So I use my me, me wing mirrors to look behind us a lot more when I've got him in the car. So like I say, that's a good habit to get into. Well, wherever, wherever I've been up here, I don't know if it's been a motorbike or something, but you can see the fresh tracks in the soft mud here. So something's been up here just recently. Right. So there you have it looking back to the cottage up on the top of the ridge. Good boys. <laughs> Good boy. What are you chewing again? Have you picked up that bloody bean again? This is the wind blowing through those trees, man. So, 17, um, next week, Christmas Eve, bloody hell. We're here again. Mind you, I'm, uh, I must say, I'm not a Christmas as a person, I didn't put trees up, I didn't put cards up, I don't send cards, I don't receive cards, because to me it's just too commercialised, it's just a, a, another way of spending loads of money, and I'd rather do what I do, I go to my daughter's house and spend time with the family and wish them a happy Christmas to their face and shake hands and stuff and have a Christmas dinner together. So I'd rather, that, that is a better Christmas for me, instead of hanging these decorations up and having trees and baubles and lights and, oh no, nah. I mean, yes, great for the kids, but <laughs> I'm grown up now, so way past all that. And like I say, I, I came to an agreement with the family uh, many moons ago where it says, look, do not send cards and I'll not send them to you. Save your money for something you could use on. So what I'll do as well, I help my daughter out every year. Um, I give her money towards getting a couple of joints of meat. Because it's expensive now, joints of meat. So by the time you've spent a fortune on the meat and then you've got a all the vids to buy as well. Christmas presents, it's ridiculous. It's no wonder parents get stressed out every year when it comes to Christmas, trying to save up enough money to spoil their kids rotten. And they still continue to tell them the fairy story that there's a big fat man in a red suit comes down the chimney and leaves the presents. <laughs> Why don't you just tell your kids the truth? That you work your hot, work your bollocks off all year round to save up money for you to buy their presents to spoil them. But that's the way you're brought up. That's the way you're programmed. Until you actually see fit with yourself to break that programming, you just keep on doing it. So you just get Christmas over, 
Then you've got Easter coming up where you've got to buy new clothes for the kids now at school. It's just money, 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 money. One thing after another. Same as bloody Halloweens and everything else. It's all buy, going out and buying bloody turnips or um, what do you call them? Pumpkins and face masks and that spray stuff to make it look like cobwebs on the. It's <laughs> it's bloody ridiculous. And the thing is, it's all satanic. It's all about evil spirits and waking the dead. When you think about Christmas and Santa, there's no such thing as St. Nicholas. Uh, S Santa is an anagram of Satan. So it's just to them, it's a satanic holiday, just like Halloween. Enticing kids with candies, and that's where they steal the kids off the streets and kill them, scare them, or that adrenochrome. That's what it's all about. I oh, shouldn't be seeing these things anyway, because I'll get this bloody um, shut down and censored and all. So I've got to be careful what I'm seeing. That's what happens when you tell the truth. You get censored again and again and again and again. But at least you know that you're over the target and you're telling the truth. When the target eat the sensor, you'd shut you up. Right, so back on that left hand bend, past the, the round homestead, go down to this, the metal bridge, cross that road, and then turn left over the, the ford, then go up the little valley. If you look straight ahead, you can see the tractor pathways that they've cut in between the trees to go to the top. When I was walking this way, it's more or less blown into us now. Look at this bugger, he's getting brave, like I say, he's getting close to the water. <laughs> what are you doing, son? What are you doing? Are you going for a drink? Get a drink. Get a drink. Good boy, good boy. Good boy. Oh, he's getting really weird, but he's left his pot. He wants to go and dip in the water. Good boy, son. Good boy. <laughs> Alright, son. Alright. Come on. Come on. Come on. Up you come. Alright. Alright, son. I'm really pleased with his progress today. <laughs> good boy, good boy. He's getting over all his fears. Good boy, son, good boy. He's not going to be scared of the water anymore by today's um, journeys. that I go over, he's just walking it. It's some get in fact. I'll film him anyway to make sure I'll see what he's like. And then when I've got across those three fords on the way back to the car, I know for a fact he just walked through them himself. Because he'd be getting used to water there. He'll get used to the coldness on his pads and his legs. And just get used to it. 
in a panic anymore. Right, let's just pan back around, look back where I've come from. So that's been a temporary that track that they've built in to go right up here to the top of the, the ridge, bring all the trees down. Good boy, son. Where are you picking? Good boy. He's more or less safe with us all the journey. And he's done by the side. I mean, he's only just gone off to explore a little bit himself, but on, on the whole, he's come back right next to us where he is now at the side of the path. So he's getting good. This will build his legs up now more. So he's got nice strong legs. Not that he needs any more strength. <laughs> he's strong as a bull now. At least the, you, you know what has stayed off. It stopped this morning when I was sitting in the car for half an hour, like recording me tenements. So not by the time I come to eight o'clock, it had stopped altogether. Which is good. Not have to stop and wipe my lens all the time on my camera. I have to take a pit of all these trees here, that's good doing. Good boy, son. Good boy. Good boy, son. When we get across to this um, ramp into the little valley, I used to step down off the step down in the way you crossed over the ford, and I used to ask um, Connor to come over and give us a kiss. <laughs> he wouldn't know. Him, no problem at all, but Corn was a very funny bugger. Even though he loved us, trying to get him to give us a kiss, <laughs> virtually impossible. Right, I had it on film because I was filming from my chest, and I was like, he was coming right towards us, I said, give us a kiss, <laughs> and his face come right to the camera. Well, I've lost all our footage now. So he has these bits of build-up islands again, look. <laughs> he's, he's walking on the edge of look. Just likes to explore, look. Is he enjoying himself? Good boy, son, good boy. <laughs> what are you doing over there, you? What are you doing? His nose is stiff, stiff, stiff. He's in the water, look. <laughs> Good boy, son. How it? How it? How it? How it? Here he comes, gazelle. <laughs> good boy, good boy, good boy, son. Good boy. I think it's just he's um he's now getting a, a lovely thought and feeling. He, lo he loves to be in the water. Look, 
that's why it's keep going back to the river's edge it's getting a fascinating uh, fascination for the water now so it'll be a case where I kind of keep moving the water like corn eventually but that's a good thing so obviously when it's a hot day you just keep going into the water and getting a drink It's a real rough patch here with the stones where they've had to redo the stones. The pass, this bit of the past rough as hell. It's for about 100 yards, 150 yards, and it goes back to normal. Right, so back along past the round homestead where the two trees are. Son. Come on. I hate to say that's broken uh, beer bottles. So the glass, I mean, if the door were, I would like cut it pads to pieces. That's why I hate people that smash bottles. There's no one think about dogs or any animal for that matter. I could cut the pads. We've got shoes or boots or what, or they haven't. Right, so this is where the path goes back to normal with these rough stones end. Or the tracks are not path. Right, we'll see. Right behind us is your good boy, son. Come on. You've been, you've been a good boy for your grandma so far, haven't you? You've been a good dog so far. Right, so we go around this next bend, and then you see the metal bridge that I've got to cross over. Then I'm not far off the valley that I'm going up. The little one. Where you say welcome. So obviously when it's been lasting down a rain day after day after day, this uh, burn gets fast and fast and fast and gets wider and wider as it's going down. And breaks the banks and go goes up on the grass tracks. In certain places. We're just getting hurt around bends. I mean, where that round homestead is, that all used to be a wall along the front, but because it's collapsed that many times, 